Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway, here for your weekly recruiting update. little blend of basketball and football today, but before we start with the recruits, let's remind everybody about K-State preparing for their trip to Ireland. Uh, under a year away now, and the Wildcats head to Dublin, Ireland next August for the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Join your Wildcats by booking your getaway at cats2ireland.com. The best seats and hotels will go fast, so secure your package now. That's Cats, the number two, Ireland.com. And then we can dive into the recruiting update. And let's start on the basketball front before we make a shift to football. Darren Peterson, one of the top players in the class of 2025, number three overall, a five-star plus in the on-three industry rankings. He will be in Manhattan this weekend taking in the Cats. Now, this is a recruitment that, Leans pretty heavily towards KU right now, it would seem. But K-State at least taking their swings, getting these guys on campus, laying out the pitch and seeing if it can make a difference. Um, what's your intel on Darren Peterson right now, Drew? Yeah, I think that you kind of just hit it on the head. I mean, it's a recruitment that is probably leading towards KU, but K-State hasn't been recruiting Darren Peterson that long and is – a team that's continually like making cuts. So I believe that he was at eight and then is now at four with K State, KU, USC, uh, and Ohio State. So you kind of like look at that as okay, this doesn't really seem like just a for fun visit because he's cut schools down but still wants to go to K State. So you kind of, as long as the recruitment again isn't over, so you they still have a chance, but you probably lean more towards KU. And it's kind of been that way for a, a little bit. But again, anytime that you can get a five-star on campus, it's never a bad thing. And it doesn't necessarily have to go your way all the time because the more inroads that you make, the better off that you'll be. I mean, we, we've kind of seen that football-wise with K-State, especially inside the state of Kansas, that those first few classes, they didn't have a lot of success, but they were able to really get in the door and this is one where you can really get in the door and you can really knock the door down if you can get one of these three five stars that K-State's going after. Well, and in some ways, it's a, it's a status thing, too, where the status can help you of getting some of these guys in the mix, seeing if you um, can at least entice them. And if you, you don't land them, you at least are notable enough in other circles and maybe it opens up the opportunity there. You, you kind of just have to keep beating on this door until eventually it falls down. So we'll see where the Darren Peterson stuff goes. There's not a ton of uh, major news on it now, other than just he is visiting this weekend, and I'm sure uh, we'll get maybe some more information uh, after the visit and kind of an update of where K-State feels like they are. And the one thing we know is that you shouldn't ever fully count out K-State because of what we know or perceive their NIL situation to be right now. And it just takes a couple of the right things to go your way and be able to make the difference and land it there. Now we'll flip to the other side of the coin and go the football route because K-State is hosting a notable fo football visitor this weekend in Jackson Taylor, uh, a quarterback in 2026. And we've talked 2026 quarterback a handful of times. I know Grant Smith was the name early on to mention. But Jackson Taylor will be in Manhattan this weekend, 30th overall quarterback in the 2026 rankings. Um, what should we know about Jackson Taylor? Yeah, I think that the thing to know about Jackson Taylor is that kind of like Grant Smith, that these are two really good quarterbacks are at the top end of the K-State recruiting board. And for an 11 a.m. game, you, you kind of get worried when you see that happen with uh, visits. But Jackson Taylor is still going to take a visit because his high school has a bye week this week. So it works out in K-State's favor. Uh, Nebraska is a school that's kind of lingering along for Jackson Taylor. Minnesota was in it for a little bit until they took a 2026 quarterback already, which, I mean, we've talked about. It seems like uh, recruitment is extremely sped up. That's one where that's that's very sped up to already have, have a quarterback. Uh, Auburn is another one that's really in the mix. So it's K-State, Nebraska, Auburn right now. And... and Really, the momentum was on K-State's side because K-State was able to get him on campus for a camp during the summer, and now you get a fall visit. So you kind of look at that as, okay, this is a, this is a big deal. And, and it's probably a two-horse race to be that, that quarterback in the 2026 class between Taylor and Grant Smith. And 
K-State's in a good spot for both, though. So I think that that's a good thing. And again, if you can wrap up your quarterback early, I think it really sets the table for what the rest of the rest of the class can be. Yeah. So in terms of how you view the the quarterback recruiting situation for K-State right now, Taylor, Smith, wherever, where is the the hierarchy and what's the level of importance of you know making these guys end up being the first in the class like Dylan Duff was the first commit in the 2025 class? In terms of hierarchy, I, th I think that K-State would easily take whoever is the first one at this point. I think that they really like both, and, and I really like both after seeing both of them at uh, camps this summer. And, and then I think that it's important because the quarterback, right, wrong, or indifferent, always feels like the face of your program and the face of like what you are doing. So if you can get the quarterback as early as you can, I think that that really helps. Or, I mean, he wasn't one of the first commits, but if you can get somebody that you know that everybody's really that everybody knows that you're prioritizing, like K-State did with Avery Johnson, that that really is a big deal and helps in other ways because it, it gives you like a status of, okay, we have this guy. He is going to be the like the future and he will have the keys to the offense. And, and especially like running backs, receivers, offensive line, tight ends, like all of the skill positions on offense kind of want to know where you're going at quarterback. Yeah, the it just feels like the quarterback sets so much up in recruiting, which makes sense because the quarterback really sets the stage for you on the field too. Uh, so it should come as no surprise that it's viewed important in the recruiting circles. Um, what, you've gotten to kind of analyze and, and talk and look at these guys a little bit more than others. What's the backstory on how Jackson Taylor came into K-State's focus and, and what is kind of the, the thing to know about him as a recruit? Yeah, Jackson Taylor was one of the first guys that uh, Matt Wilt offered after he got the job as K-State's quarterbacks coach. So they kind of got the inroads from that, and Wells and Taylor have developed a, a strong relationship so far uh, to the point where, I mean, you look at Jackson Taylor's offer sheet, and it, it's pretty impressive for his age. And he still chose to come to a K-State camp despite already having an offer because he wanted to learn from Wells. And you kind of get that as, okay, this is like a serious thing. So I think that Wells has helped. And I think that I think that there's still just that status of what K-State has done recently. And when you win consistently and you put quarterbacks in the NFL, I think that, that really helps. And K-State's done a really good job of that under Chris Kleiman of winning and having quarterbacks on NFL rosters. And, and, and I think that you combine those two plus Matt Wells's energy, because we, we know that he has been one of the best recruiters at K-State since coming to Manhattan. So you kind of get both of all of those combined. And this is how you have the number 30 quarterback coming for an unofficial visit. This is more of a philosophical recruiting question why is it, while we've seen, you know, obviously K-State's been able to land some big targets. Uh, some have been because, you know, they're in state. Um, and, and this has been a good run the last three years, really, uh, three to four years of talent in the state of Kansas going back to Avery Johnson's class and even to uh, what's coming down the line for 2025, 2026. Why is it, though, that outside of having an Avery Johnson in your state where you're able to to have that in instantly and then, be able to showcase yourself and get him to buy in. Uh, why is it that it's tougher to, to get more of these high end quarterbacks uh, where, you know, we don't see as many of the four star status quarterbacks or higher uh, consider not just for K state, but other schools of the same ilk for the wildcats. I think that that is all about where you can go. And I think that it's a lot of the status just of like being that highly ranked that they want to go play for some of like the perceived upper echelon schools. And, and what you really see for schools like K-State, Iowa State, because Alex Mansky is now a four star, is you kind of get what you see is they get the guys and then they routinely get reevaluated. And that's when they become the higher ranked guys. Like, it wouldn't shock me if Jackson Taylor or Grant Smith even end up in that high three-star, low four-star range by the time that it's all said and done. So I, I think that the upper ones, it's just because they're very known 
and they're very known by the upper big schools where like you can get somebody like Dylan Duff who could still showcase like his ranking get up up a little bit and then Alex Mansky that Iowa State ended up getting in the 2025 class that those guys are the ones that you see and you get like the development kind of as they go and progress through high school where the other ones I think that they are just like so good immediately that you get like Oregon's and Georgia's Alabama and, and those schools of the world to, to kind of go after them more. Makes sense. I just wanted to, to kind of give you that opportunity there to, to explain it to uh, people on, on why that may be just because I think people see now K-State elevating their profile with some of these guys and we've seen them have success with high end offensive linemen that aren't from the state of Kansas um, and, and all that close by. So there have been reaches in some spots, but some of those more uh, skill positions and vanity spots, essentially, um, it's just it's still tough to, to crack that code there. Uh, moving on, last thing for you, you wanted to note on some recruits for K-State that are off to pretty hot starts with their high school season, which a good reminder for everybody that it, if you want to follow along with high school football at really any stage, any level, a good place to go is on three because you can go find the Kansas Massey ratings if you want to see how um, Massey is going through and rating everybody in the state and then how they stack up. They use a combination of the scores and then some projections and everything else. They have their metrics in there. Uh, right now, according to them, the top team in the state is St. Thomas Aquinas. But in addition to having the rankings, you can go in, you can find team schedules. And on Friday nights currently – you can find live scores for the top 25 in the state of Kansas. So, for example, this week, St. Thomas Aquinas, the number one team in the state, they are facing number 12, Blue Valley Southwest. Go to on three, find the high school page, and uh, you'll be able to see live scores populate for the state uh, and really anywhere else. And then, as I've talked about with other people, I love the team pages because you go to them and you're able to see a full history of guys from that school. So like I click on Derby right now and it'll show you current recruits that are on their roster. So Martel Jackson, a K-State commit, Desan Brame, a Tennessee commit, and then also notable alumni like Dylan Edwards being the highest ranked recruit of all time out of Derby High School um, and some others from the same uh, kind of area in timing. So uh, good, good reference point for that. But uh, who are some of the guys that you wanted to note about their good starts to the 2024 high school season? Yeah, and I'm just highlighting commits because that those are the guys that I really kind of zoom in on and really dial into uh, while their season is going on. Uh, the first one is Monterey Wellston, uh, the running back commit from Arkansas. He is a human highlight film. His highlight tape is extremely fun from this season. And, and just kind of talking around, it, it's everybody is kind of wondering why he doesn't get the ball more at his high school because he's just so explosive and so kind of just ready to take off. And I think that he's going to be that next small running back that K-State has that a lot of fans are going to be very annoyed with. Uh, the second guy uh, was a guy that I think that there were a few people that were kind of questioning K-State taking him because of his size, but Dalton Knapp right now is the number one player in the state of Texas in sacks and has had games with three sacks, four sacks, and has really gotten off to a hot start and is keeping that athleticism and is still getting bigger and, and still getting a lot stronger as well. And then the, the final one that I'll mention in this uh, is Logan Bartley. Uh, he, he has really, really fun tape and has a lot of uh, physical tools and was really impressive looking when we saw him uh, take his official visit. Uh, but his, his tape is really fun. He can really hit. He can really cover. And, and it's kind of on that train, uh, in that track of where I think that he could potentially, again, play and not redshirt next season even. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's interesting to hear. And we know that this has kind of been a trend for K-State over the, the last handful of years where um, some of these guys, especially secondary guys, have been able to carve out roles for themselves to where they don't redshirt. And they're able to see the field on defense, but also especially on special teams. Like, um, you know, Jack Fabris kind of had that role last year. Nigel Thomas was out there quite a bit. 
Um, and then I, I this year, Zayshon Rich is in that boat. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think that anybody when Zayshon Rich initially committed <laughs> thought that he would be the freshman to play and all be on the travel so roster. <laughs> yes, and be the only one on the travel roster, like be the one that's going to not redshirt. So they, they know what they're doing in the secondary recruit yeah. guys. No doubt about it. All right, uh, that will do it for today's K-State recruiting update. We will have another one for you next week, and by the time we do that, it'll have moved on to the week of October. It will be K-State's bye week, so we can take a couple of different angles there and kind of discuss it and getting close to uh, some times where the three of us are going to be out on the road checking out different K-State commits. We're also a handful of weeks away. Um, not next weekend, but the following that the three of us on our way out to Boulder will make a pit stop in Goodland to see Lincoln Cure. So uh, that will obviously be a big one for everybody as we go check out K-State's five-star tight end commit out in western Kansas. So stay on the lookout for all that and everything K-State recruiting with us here at K-State Online. You can do it by going to On3 and being a member of KSO for all the inside info. Drew will have great coverage all weekend of the visitors that do make it for the early 11 a.m. kick against Oklahoma State. So that will do it for us today. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Both. Thanks for watching and listening to the KSO Show. We are back again tomorrow. D.Y. and I will recap the coordinators. And then Friday, early in the morning, the preview show will be live. So plenty more to come your way this week as K-State gears up for Oklahoma State.